to a tutorial of, for beginners on plastering. Um, I'm not a plasterer, I've never been taught to plaster and I've never even really watched anyone else plaster other than YouTube videos. So I thought I'd have a go at making my own video and showing you how I do it. So I'm sure some of you will have other ways and better ways but this is how I do it. So firstly a quick run through of what you're going to need to do your plastering. Um, we'll start with the basics. We've got a float which I bought from Screwfix along with the Hawk. Uh, was, I went for a, quite a good one, uh, I didn't buy the cheapest one, it's a stainless steel with a curve on it which seems to do the job quite nicely. Uh, a bucket trowel which is handy for when you're emptying out the bucket and helping with the mixing. An old brush for cleaning and rolling down the corners. Uh, a scraper for various jobs. An old um, kitchen cleaner bottle for the water and that comes for the washing down and polishing. Uh, the plaster, I've got thistle multi finish, which is because I'm only skimming doing the top coat. For the mixing, I've got uh, I think it's a kilowatt electric drill, which seems to be powerful enough, and quite a big mixer, which I've bought again, bought from Screwfix, cut the end off with an angle grinder because it had a big nut on it, which I got rid of, and just put it in the electric drill. I've got a big rubble bucket, again, I think from Screwfix for mixing in, and another bucket which I just use for washing tools and for keeping the water in. Extension lead, and I think that's about it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is tell you about prepping the wall. So this wall, um, the house is fairly old so the walls are a bit rough. It had wallpaper on it, which couldn't really be filled and painted. It was getting a bit tatty, got holes in it where shelves and things had been up. So all the wallpapers come off. Uh, giving it a good clean up, make sure there's no little bits of paper left, really good, good strip down with a steam stripper and then mixed up uh, PVA glue which I buy in 5 litre uh, pots, mixed about 50% with water and then just got a wall, uh, painting roller and tray and just go over it several times. Make sure you get plenty where there's holes and so get plenty of the, the mix in there. So it's just like spreading milk all over the wall and what that does is seals it and stops the water from the plaster getting sucked straight into the wall and drying out too quick. So this room is about uh, two and a half metres by three metres. And for this, I reckon I'm not going to need much more than one bag of plaster. So this is one 25 kilo bag, and because I'm only very, doing a very thin top coat, uh, I think that'll almost do the whole room is one bag. Another very important uh, thing in the prep for plastering is plenty of cups of tea. And they appear like magic. Another quick tip on preparation is where you're going to be plastering right up against the surface, such as around the windowsill, make sure it's good and clean. And otherwise, if there's lumps of old wallpaper and plaster there, they'll get stuck on your tools and then you'll be spreading them on the wall. So just go around all the different surfaces with a dustpan and brush and give it a clean. Now in this room I'm planning some quite tall skirting board and coving so we're not going to be worrying too much about the top and bottom but again get rid of any big lumps or dirt on the floor just to avoid it getting picked up onto the wall. So a quick top tip on the uh, PVA is get an old milk bowl put in 50% PVA, 50% water Give it a good shape so it looks a bit like single cream type of consistency, 50-50. And then pour it into your tray ready for spreading on the wall. It makes the whole job much quicker. And if you don't use it all, it's in the bottle ready for next time. Right, we're now going to do a bit of mixing. So, using the big yellow bucket, Put a bit of water in first, stop it all sticking to the bottom. Now a lot of plasterers who are much better at this than me would mix up a whole bag or half a bag and they'd know all the measurements, but I don't. So I'm just going to make it up as I go along. So I'm going to tip probably a third of a bag into here, maybe a bit more. Get the mix up, give it a little stir around to get things started. That's too dry, a bit more water. A 
and then put the drill on the slowest setting and very gently start it off. Way too dry, a bit more water. One of these things where it will suddenly be too wet if you're not careful. And a little bit more in there. Right, when you get the bucket trowel. trowel down on the floor where there'll be lumps and bumps and bits of dirt because you want to keep everything as clean as possible so I'll chuck that in the water. Just need a little bit more in there. I might have done that but let's have a look. You don't want to mix it too much because it ends up full of air. You've got to get make sure, make sure there's no lumps, no big dry bits at the bottom, which there is at the moment. So go around, get all those bits out the bottom. Be very careful not to smash the camera lady. She's doing an excellent job. Right. Basically you want a lovely smooth plaster, absolutely no lumps, any lumps on the wall make the job ten times harder. That's still a tiny, tiny bit too firm. So what you're looking for is it to be almost falling, so a bit like a, a bit like a meringue. So what you want to be able to do is take the tool out and it to leave a hole. See it's left a nice hole there? If it all collapses in then it's too wet. Right, that's pretty much done. So we'll put the drill speed up. Clean it off. And that's the mixing done. Now the other thing I forgot to mention is if you leave all this on there, by the time you come to mix, mix your next batch it will be rock hard and it will all be lumpy. So put that in the water, give it a quick spin, clean it up, clean all the goo off there. That's ready to use next time without me faffing around. Action! Right, so we're now actually going to start plastering the exciting bit. First thing to do, get your brush, just wet your hook down a little bit around the edges as well. It just stops the plaster sticking to the old plaster that's on there. Again, don't put your tools down on the ground because they'll get all covered in dust. So wet it round, nice and wet. Put that on there. Same with the float, you just give it a little bit of wet on the front and back. So now, get your hook, float in hand, put the brush in there. Cut the nice big dollops of plaster on there, as the video said. So now, this first coat is just, the, the, what you're trying to do is get as much plaster on the wall as quickly as possible. So don't worry about lumps, bumps, just get it on there, get a cup.
Right, so what you can do is you can use either side. So if you're working away from a wall, you obviously want to put the plaster on the side to the wall, spread it across. so hopefully we can speed it up. Right, so that's the first coat on. If you have a look at it, all sorts of lumps and bumps and things, but basically we've got a layer of plaster on the whole wall. So coat one done. Right, so while coat one is going off, you'll notice I used almost all the plaster. So I mixed up just the right amount for the first coat. I'm sure I could have mixed up enough for two coats in one go, but I prefer to do it this way. I'm now just gonna give everything a very quick wash down because what I don't want is any slightly gone off lumps in my new plaster for the second coat. So just a very quick wash down. Okay, so we're now getting ready for the second coat. We've got to leave this first coat for probably 10 or 15 minutes to go a bit bit firm, I just wait till it's a bit like a soft cheese on the wall. Uh, so now I'm going to mix up the second coat, which is going to be just a filler thin coat. So I'll move, mix up about half the amount I did for the first uh, coat. Right, so the second coat I find a bit more tricky than the first, mainly because it's a bit harder to see where you have and haven't been. So you need to be a bit more systematic, a bit more controlled about where you go. And basically what you want to do is just put a second thin coat on, start filling all the gaps, any little holes, make sure they're filled in, and start getting it a little bit smoother. So basically the same as the first coat, off we go. What? 
Right, so the second coat is on now, so the whole wall has got a, a nice thin second coat on. Uh, you can start to feel when it's, things are going well, the float just seems to feel smooth over the whole wall. If you hit any hard dry bits then you know you've missed a bit. So it's just a case now of smoothing down. So what you want to try and do, or what I do anyway, is nice long strokes now to try getting rid of any of the marks that the float has left. Just keep doing nice long strokes. See, it's just gliding nicely over the whole surface. So around the socket here, you can see there's plaster going all in the socket, don't worry about that, that'll come out easily later. The wiring in there is turned on, but all the ends are well wrapped with insulation tape to avoid any wet plaster getting in there. So now just, we just keep the long strokes working towards the middle of the wall. Oops, what happened there was the, plant, the, the float went flat, so it all stuck, so I need to do that bit over again. Now another problem you can have is if, as you're going up, as you start to lift off the pressure, you can end up doing a little fast bit, and the, the float will judder, and you end up, like I've got here, like little, little lines in the wall. So you need to get rid of them quick before they go hard. And what you want to do is, when, as, you, as you're finishing your stroke, keep the speed smooth and keep the pressure even. See what happened there? On the on the float, there's a little bit of gravel somewhere. I must have picked it up off the floor or off my clothes or something. So we flick it out, make sure it's not in there, and it's left a little hole. And a little bit of plaster on that. See, see the float is covered in wet plaster, so there's always plenty on there to use. And then just go right down over it. We're not worried too much along the top, I want it to look tidy, but we're going to have covering along there. Along the bottom we're going to be fitting skirting so it doesn't need to go all the way down. But what you don't want to do is leave too many big dollops of plaster along the bottom because it just makes fitting the skirting board difficult. So that's the trouble when you get a plaster in, he's not fitting the skirting board, but I am. So I want it to be nice and smooth along the bottom as well. So we're nearly there now. See, again, I've missed a little bit down there, so what I'm going to do is just get a little bit of extra plaster on there. Just give that an extra little bit of plaster, so it's nice and smooth. So while the second coat's drying, another important step is a cup of tea, and I think here comes the tea fairy. Ta-da! Thank you, tea fairy. Okay, so now it's the final stage, which is the third coat or the polish stage. So it doesn't really involve adding any more plaster. So the first thing to do is get your equipment absolutely spotless, because this is where things have got to be really clean and smooth. So the float, lovely and clean. And then you get your sprayer. You can use a brush and flick it on the wall if you're uh, probably better at this than I am, but I like to use a sprayer. So you'll see now the wall is looking pretty good. There's a few little marks where the float's left, so we need to get rid of them, a few up here. Uh, the wall is starting to go sort of hard, but not, not drying yet. So what you want to do is just a tiny little spray, not too much. 
and just start gently working the wool. What you don't want to do is spray too much water on it because that will wash the top layer of the fine dust of the, part of the plaster out of the way. So what you don't want to do is flood it and let see all the plaster washing off the wall. So it's just a, a gentle spray just to lubricate it and then gently pull it across. A little bit dry there, a bit more water. And what you'll find is that on the float you get this tiny little thin layer of fine plaster on it. And that's really what you're using and that will fill in any cracks and it lubricates the float. So you just want to start going over all of the areas. Again, try and be systematic. Still maybe a little bit soft this wall, but I'll use, use this time to get rid of some of the bigger marks. This is where being six foot tall helps, because you can just about reach the top of that. Amount. Right, the wall's now done, everything is polished and it's just got to dry. My camera lady's got a bit bored and uh, gone to do something else. But, uh, Basically, smooth as a uh, something to focus. Smooth as a baby's bottom. It's going to have a really nice glassy finish to it. Here's one I did yesterday, and I have to say, really nice finish. As good as the uh, the walls that the plasterer did in the hallway and the stairwell. So very happy with it. So all in all, this room has used probably just over one bag of plaster, which cost six pounds. And if I wasn't filming and I was just getting on with it, it probably would have taken me three or four hours. So I'm um, not going to break any speed records, but um, excellent finish. And uh, got the whole room plastered for less than a tenner. Obviously I had to buy a few tools, but I've got them for life. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.
action. <laughs> I've got that on tape. I'm going to show my children that one day. Oh, we weren't only children. I want to have children. Right, cut.